conference, the Jazz. Well, congratulations. I can't wait. Thank you all. Thank you. It's really, we're really happy, we're really praising God. It's a wonderful blessing. Children are a blessing from the Lord. Yes, they are. Well, it is 7 p.m. and we are excited to learn. I mean, I'm excited to share the stuff that I learned because I learned a lot this week. You all have your Bibles? Yep. Turn to John chapter 3 because we're going to move right into there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. We all know that story. Yep. And but there's some things that we didn't know. Let me read a little bit and then we'll go talk. Chapter three, verse one, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. So he was a, an authority figure. He had some authority uh, among the Jews and the, of the Pharisees. And this guy comes to Jesus by night. And that's significant because he didn't want to be associated with Jesus. He has questions about who is this guy. And he's heard about the miracles. And he wants to go check him out for himself and ask him some questions um, in a respectful manner, but by night. And he says unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. So it's an honorable um, uh, greeting, and Jesus answered and said, well, you'll notice that Nicodemus hasn't even posed a question, but the answered and said is a, a Hebrew idiom, which means like, the teacher taught and said this. So he's going to tell him what he wants to tell him. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus says unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. The wind blows where it listeth. And thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, Well, how can these things be? And Jesus answered him and said, Art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? You should know this stuff. You're a leader of the Jews. You're of the Pharisees. You should know what I'm talking about. Well, let's go back to the, the verse that uh, is famous and popular and misunderstood. And that would be um, the verse three. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then, the, and then he amplifies on that. And he says, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So we see the idea of what looks like two births there, the born of water and of the spirit. So you've got to be born again, one of the water, one of the spirit. So you've got two things there. Well, I think we've all heard that taught that the spirit, born of the water has to do with our natural birth somehow because of the amniotic fluid, maybe. And because this, um, the second one is um, born of the spirit. So we need to contrast spirit with this water thing somehow. And so we go natural birth, spiritual birth. Well, that's not necessarily 
a, a wrong thing to understand that there's a distinction between a spiritual birth and a physical birth. Remember earlier on, this was all about baptism in the first chapter, where John was baptizing in the Jordan. And that was a physical cleansing. And then the, then the spirit comes down onto Jesus and stays there. And there you have a spiritual baptism. So you have one of the physical cleansing and then one of the spirit. Well, John, as we said last week, the signs that he talks about, the miracles that he talks about, he selected eight of them in this gospel of those miracles. Jesus did a lot of miracles. Well, how could you pick just eight? And why eight? It's because he's trying to frame something here. He's trying to simplify, boil things down to get the big picture across. It's, I remember Mary Jane, my, my little sister, asked me one time what my favorite Beatles song was. And I think I did. I named um, Day in the Life, Strawberry Fields, I'm a Walrus or something. And she was aghast. She said, how can you say that? How can you have a favorite Beatles song? Her measure was that they're all here. They're all the greatest. That You can't have one over another. It's like, which is your favorite child? You can't do that. They're all like this. Well, when it comes to all the miracles that Jesus did, John had a purpose in, so, in selecting, pulling out this or that because for some very specific purposes. We, we need to see it from a higher, loftier perspective to understand these things. Well, what if this uh, baptism and um, the two births are not... Uh, a natural birth of us and then a spiritual birth of us. But if this, and especially, why would he say the rabbi should know this stuff? Because I think that it's what we're seeing is a picture of Exodus. That Exodus is the defining story of the Jews. What were the Jews when they were in, in slavery to Egypt? Well, we know that it was Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the 12, but the priesthood, the, the miracles, uh, their, the, the promised land, the, um, their spreading uh, around them, uh, bringing Messiah, all that stuff was future for them at that point. Their whole identity that makes a Jew a Jew is from the Exodus. The miracles that God did of the Passover, getting them out of there, the, the, the Red Sea parting. The, the enemy, the soldiers drowning there, and then all of the wilderness experience of God providing for them and, and all of the testing and stuff that went on there. The Jews are defined by Exodus. That's why every, every bar mitzvah and every bas mitzvah, they know that inside and out. It's drilled into the Jewish zeitgeist because that's the Jewish identity. It comes from the Exodus. So the rabbi knows all about that. Well, how can that relate to what he's talking about here, what Jesus is talking about. You've got to be born. So the Jews were born through that Red Sea. The Jewish nation, the Jewish identity, the, it was all solidified with miracles, 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 God pressing upon them. They were born naturally as, a, as people. Their identity was as being born a Jew. They were born into that. What was spiritual about it? Well, there was miracles. There was obedience to the laws. But it was a natural birth. It was a natural thing. And when Jesus comes along, he's saying, that's not enough. Just being a good Jew is not enough to see the kingdom of God. You must be born of the spirit. That's a whole other kingdom, a whole other way of looking at things. And that was striking to the Jews. They thought they were just sitting pretty waiting for their king and everything was going to be fine. And now he shows up and he's got a different message. If you look at the spirit 
um, here. Look at some of the things that, that can tip us off to, to this stuff. Um, when in, the, in Genesis, you had the spirit was hovering over what? Over the waters. Well, Jesus is baptized and the spirit is there hovering over him. A new creation. A new covenant is being formed here. The covenant is not the old covenant of the law. It's a new covenant of grace is being formed here. Then he says, You're, aren't you thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that that we know and we testify that we have seen and you receive not our witness. Now, if I've told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Well, that was the whole difference between life as a Jew being pleasing to God and through obedience, and they're still in the flesh, and they're still on the earth, and they're still in Canaan. They're, that's not heaven. It's still on the earth. It's still in a corrupted environment. The whole corrupt cosmos of this earth, still the God of this world in charge of things. These things are spiritually discerned, and you must have the spiritual capacity, the spiritual dimension inside to have these things be spiritually discerned so it makes sense on a much grander scale. It didn't make sense to the, to the Jew. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, well, it's another uh, picture of the Exodus story of what, what happened in the um, in the wilderness with the Jews as they were being solidified into with all these miracles around them. This is an Exodus story. The Exodus story that was so big that was defining to make the Jewish people what they what they were was a picture of us, of the whole world being freed from the bondage of sin, having the gods of this world defeated and being liberated into the Canaan, which is the new heaven, the new earth. The only way that you can get there is by being born through the spirit. And that was the spirit that hovered over the waters. The waters in the original in Genesis were, was a waters of chaos. The earth was without form. It was void. It was tohu vabohu. It was it, some been destroyed. And the whole thing was su submerged in water. Just as we had with the flood story with Noah, God flooded the whole earth to eradicate the, the sin um, there. Well, as you have life comes out of the waters of chaos, God brings life out of that because you can begin to divide, you separate the waters, bring the earth forth, which brings the third day, brings the earth forth. I mean, the, and then this, the, 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 that's when the, um, the, the plants grew, all of the seeds uh, uh, bearing fruits and vegetables will grew on the third day. The earth comes out of the water, all the plants come up. So new creation, new covenant. There's a new covenant we have with God through Christ, through the spirit baptism. The Jews could only get so far as a nation. Well, how does one become a Jew? At some point, I mean, there was Jews, I mean, Gentiles among the Jews that came out of Egypt, but it was a small number, maybe 1% of the, of the people that came out of Egypt with them were Gentiles. But the prescription is, has nothing to do with being a Jew, but just by being a good Jew, just because you're born into the family doesn't make you able to see the kingdom of God. You have to be born again of the spirit you need to be baptized by the spirit and that gives you a new life and it brings you into the kingdom of god everybody comes in that way not a jew or gentile doesn't matter you come in and you're in the kingdom of god whatever you were before it doesn't matter you come in as a new creature in christ if we look at the 
as we go forward through John, if we <clears throat> bear these things in mind, of all of the things that, that John could talk about, we'll see this pattern established, or, or a pattern. I won't say that it's all Exodus, <clears throat> but it, is, it certainly is in, in this uh, third chapter. Um, and verse 13, and no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, the son of man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. And some of you might not be familiar with the story of Moses and the brazen serpent, but this was um, in the wilderness uh, within the first uh, year. Uh, the, Moses was up on the mountain getting uh, instructions from God and he'd been up there for a long time all the Jews who were not, were not permitted and didn't want to go up in the mountain because it was scary, it was shaking, and it was covered with smoke, and it was scary. Um, they thought he wasn't coming back, and they melted a bunch of gold and made a golden cow and started to worship it. It was idol worship, which was forbidden, and that was what the, the, the Canaanite people used idols to contact their gods. And so here's the, the Jews doing an abominable thing uh, in Moses's absence. And so they're partying with this, uh, and I'm gonna, you know, big feast with this golden cow. And that's where Moses comes down with the 10 commandments and he sees it, he's so, so furious, he smashes the, the, the 10 commandments. He smashes the, the golden uh, uh, cow and he grinds up and grinds up the gold into powder and he pours it into their water and he makes them drink the water. It, it was awful. He was really pissed off at them. But um, the um, uh, the Jews at this at this point are being bitten by snakes through their disobedience. And the snakes are poisonous snakes. And so if they're they're dying from these from these snakes. Remember, they're in the wilderness. Snakes live in the wilderness. Well, when they were obedient to God, the snakes weren't biting them. But now in their rebellion, well, guess what? They're vulnerable. They're not, they're not obeying God. They're not with God. His power is not with them. It, that's lifted. Snakes come and start biting them. God tells Moses. Moses appeals to God, what am I supposed to do? And he says, well, take a banner staff, one of the, the, the things you would hold the, 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 the banners of each of the 12 tribes. Uh, they had a long banner that would hang down, you know, not like our flag that, that waves, it, it would hang down. Uh, and so it was this big staff and, and take a, a, a bronze, which is uh, uh, but, uh, brass and tin, and I forget what alloys it is. Make us make us a, uh, a serpent on there, put it on, on, the, on the cross, on this wooden staff, this cross, put the snake symbol of in the garden, hold it up and everybody who looks at the snake won't die. If you will look at the snake, you will live. That's a picture of our salvation. Look and live. If, if we simply behold the glory of God, we'll be changed in his image. If we behold the, the, the dead snake on the cross, the sin being being conquered on the cross, this thing that your enemy now has being, as being the enemy is sin of your enemy, uh, the, the, your enemy, the, the sin, that being held up on the cross, you look at that, that obedience to God, the snakes won't bite you and, you, and you'll live. So um, that's as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, verse 14, even so must the son of man be lifted up that whosoever believes in him should not be bitten by the snakes, should not die, but have eternal life. Eternal life. And the, one of the most famous verses is 316. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Whoso, not whichever of you Jews. It's not for the Jews. Whosoever believes. This is what Nicodemus is hearing. 
whosoever believes. Because the kingdom of God was that was just the Jews. They just thought that was for them. That they were going to be the, well, they are a nation of priests and kings, but they didn't realize that Gentiles were going to be brought into that same blessing. For God so loved the world. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through but that the world through him might be saved, not condemned, but saved. He that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already because he's not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and that men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. We opened up in this, in this uh, book about the, um, the light came into the world and uh, into the darkness and the darkness could not overtake it. And here we see a reiteration of that same concept. This is the condemnation that light has come into the world. Christ has come into the world. Remember, he says not to condemn it. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through the world, but that through him it might the world might be saved. He that believes is not condemned. But he that believes not is condemned already. So we see that the believing, which is an exercise of our faith, is what's required, not necessarily obedience and a um, doing something to score points or to, to merit your entry into the kingdom of God. It's a matter of faith, of believing. So here, that this is the, this is the condemnation. Light came into the world, and men loved the darkness rather than the light. He didn't come to judge the world. But the light shows up. Well, what happens? You turn the lights on, the cockroaches scatter. I don't know if you've ever seen that. I've seen it in, a, in an old barn. You, know, you turn the light on in, at, at night, and there was a zillion cockroaches all around. And they all, you know, scattered to hide. Well, people are the same way with their sins. You become sin conscious when the light goes on. Because you know your deeds are evil. You've been in the dark because it's where you, you don't want to be around the light. The light's going to expose it, and people are going to know, and God's going to know what you've been up to. Well, men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that does evil hates the light and neither comes to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth comes to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. This book starts with, with a emulating Genesis. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was uh, God and the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and there wasn't anything made that was uh, that wasn't made by him. And in him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, the darkness could not comprehend it. He that does the truth comes to the light. John the Baptist was telling people, come to the light. He is here. He's not prepare the way of the Lord. If you're doing the uh, if you don't come to the Lord. It's because your deeds are evil and you're afraid of judgment. But if you understand that he is the light to lead you out of darkness, he is the one leading you to liberty and freedom, you'll want to come to him. You, you want to have that. This is why it's so important that people understand the, understand the scriptures, understand the, the grace of God, the love of God, is because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So that we can come to him and not be judged. You know, he shows up and he's just doing all these miracles and he's perfect. You know, you know he's perfect and you know you're not. 
He doesn't have to say a word. You're judged already just by him showing up. But he said, I don't come to condemn the world. What's he supposed to do? Condemn us to hell? We're already condemned to hell. His peace coming here to get us out of that, to save us, to deliver us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Um, he that doeth truth comes to the light that his deeds may be made manifest. There should be no reason to hide from the light. The sunshine is good. People who uh, are creatures of the night, people who they don't want to go to church because they don't want to be reminded of their sins and they avoid it all their lives. It's, it's so important that, that we be examples of this to people so that they, they don't... Uh, they need to see what it's like to really be free and happy because the love is what's going to persuade them to want to come. It's just like the scared dogs. I'd use this example at church often. I see these videos of dogs that have been, uh, you know, run away or abandoned and they've been living on their own for like a year or more. And they're, uh, they're like wild animals. Their hair is all matted and gnarly. And um, there's, they're, they're uh, afraid they won't let people come near them. They, you know, they'll, they'll, lash out and they, you know, run and they hide their, their living out in nature and they're just, you know, foraging for whatever they can eat and they're terrified and they were domesticated, but now they're, you know, and they're scared being out there. And so these people go to try to uh, save the animals and uh, so they'll give them some food and the dog will come out and get the food and, you know, the, the people will try to catch them in a uh, you know, snare the animals somehow so that they can uh, get them to safety. And so after scratching their head a little bit, they win the, the animals over, they give them a bat at, bath at the, at the vet and shave them and, and the warm water and they feed them real good. And the next thing you know, the next day, the dog is playing with a bunch of other dogs at the, um, in the backyard and they're all free and happy and just being, you know, happy puppies. Well, that's the way people people are the same way we're we're afraid and we're hiding from god in our sins and uh but it takes some love it takes a little you know scratch them on the head give them a bone uh love them and let them see that taste and see the lord is good uh he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him um so we're bumping up against the end of um of our time here but uh Think about the uh, being born again is departing from national Israel, from being a Jew, and becoming a, a citizen of heaven, being born through uh, by the Spirit. The Jewish people were born through their Exodus thing, born of the water, because they came through the water. Jesus then came through the water, then the Spirit came upon him, and that's what it's supposed to be for us. Israel, we're not to, we're, we're, we're to learn from Israel, but these are examples, they're pictures of spiritual things that it takes uh, the spirit to help make these things meaningful and real to us. Um, the fact that John selected these certain things, these certain miracles in these stories, this was late in the game. All the, the three other um, gospels were written. He wrote this later. And so he's trying to, give us a very lofty picture of what God is doing. Remember, salvation isn't a thing. It's not a method. It's not a prescription. Uh, it's not a, a handbook of how to live. It's a person. We are married to a person, to a cosmic, invisible person who created the entire universe. He wants to be intimately in us and with us and lead us uniquely in the way he made us to be as unique as our fingerprints are. We've got to see this as one story. This is our exodus. Christ is our exodus. We've been delivered out of the bondage of an evil ruler, which is the God of this world. The, all the other gods have been busted down and made a show of openly at the cross, just like Moses did with the gods of the of Pharaoh. He did, systematically... Um, uh, put, took down each of the 10 gods of Egypt with the plagues. So I, uh, I hope that we can have spiritual eyes and ears as we proceed through the rest of the book of John. And that the, tonight was a blessing that you learned some, some cool stuff, gave you some things to think about. And um, uh, I wish there was more time to drill that down 
uh, more, but you know, I want to want to get through uh, each piece at a time. These are big chunks to swallow. So it's it's really nice to see all of you. I miss you. It's so cool as we can get together on Thursdays. How many people do we have tonight, Lilia? Hi, Denise. Uh, Twelve people. Hi. But of course, some of the cameras have double, double the people. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice. Well, Jesus had 12. That's a good number. <laughs> that was very insightful. And some of the things you said I had never thought about before. I really appreciate you sharing those things. Yeah. <laughs> well, cool. I'm so glad. Um, I, I got a boogie and... Uh, I'll let you guys carry on for a few more minutes. Thank you, Lilia, for hosting. It's good to see all of you. Can't wait to see you on Sunday. Remember, Sunday, it's Easter, and it's also Bring a Friend to Church Day. Just kidding. But, uh, yeah, I look forward to celebrating the Resurrection Day with you.